Welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to automate the blast gates in my dust collection system so when a blast gate opens, the dust collector automatically turns on. I know they make remote controls that do pretty much the same function, but I can barely keep track of the tool I just had in my hand, so the chances of me keeping track of a remote control are pretty much nil. So this is going to be hardwired. If you want to do something similar, I've got plans on my website complete with links to buy the needed equipment, wiring diagrams, instructions, and templates for the blast gate. The link is in the description down below. So without further ado, let's get to work. All right. First step is to wire this up, make sure it works. So I've got my plug, cord, car driving by, relay, outlet box, micro switches, doorbell wire, outlet. So we can cut a little bit off of this. Just need black wire. I wired everything according to the plans. The relay is what makes all the magic happen. Time to test it. Alrighty. So we're gonna plug in the lamp to the outlet. And we're going to plug this into the wall. All right, lamp did not turn on. Hey! So when the doorbell wire gets power, it triggers a relay and turns the lamp on. Awesome. All right, now that we know that this technological masterpiece, the marvels of electricity works, it's time to make it all pretty and get the desk collection hooked up. Basically, all I did was mash everything into the outlet box so it all fit. My local hardware store sold gaskets for where the wires entered the box to make it look extra fancy. Time to make the blast gates. I'm going to have five drop downs in my desk collection system, so I made five blast gates. I cut everything to the size and the plans out of a three quarter inch piece of plywood. Then I printed out the templates, cut them to size, and used spray adhesive to attach them to the plywood. Using some complicated Euclidean geometry, I was able to make the holes in the top and bottom pieces the exact size of the outside diameter of the 4-inch PVC, and the hole in the center piece exactly 4 inches. That way there won't be any loss of suction when the blast gates are open. Next, I drilled the bolt hole. I used a 3 8 inch bit in the drill press so that they were perfectly vertical, but if you're careful, a hand drill will work just fine. Then I cut out the rounded corners on the bandsaw. This isn't critical to the build, but it makes them look pretty, and who doesn't like pretty shop furniture? Then I drilled out starter holes for the jigsaw and cut out the big holes. And I used a drum sander attachment in my drill press to clean up the ugliest sin jigsaw cuts. So basically, just sandwiches like this. Bolts through the holes. <clears throat> Looking at it, might need data support here, but let's put it together and see how it works. First, we're gonna put some paste wax. 
Nope. First, glue on the handles. I use super glue and wood glue to attach them. The wood glue acts as the loan shark, while the super glue acts as the bat wielding heavy. The handles are so afraid of getting their kneecaps broken that they're frozen in place until the wood glue sinks its claws into it and now they're stuck forever. Then I cut out the handle templates, spray adhesive of them on, and cut out the pretty corners on the bandsaw. I sanded all the corners smooth, so they were not only pleasant to look at, but pleasant to touch. Alright, now we're gonna do the face Oh god! <laughs> I'm ready for that. Watch out for paste wax and hot days, people. It looks nice and solid, but it has the consistency of warm putts. Gross. I added paste wax on all the slidey parts and then attached everything with bolts and washers. Alright, I think that'll work. Now that the proof is in the pudding, it's time to assemble the rest of the blast gates. I didn't want to deal with cutting the drop downs to exact lengths, so I cut off short pieces of PVC and attached them to the top and bottom of the blast gates with 100% silicon. I tried multiple hand tools to try to cut the PVC, but the miter saw was the most effective. Although, it was also the loudest. Time to run the dust collection pipes. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this since everyone's shop is different, but the main goal is to have as few sharp 90 degree angles as possible. Use two 45 degree angle couplers with the straight bit when possible. Otherwise, they sell long and short 90 degree couplers. Use the long one. I know the my dust collector sucks jokes are as old as Paul Sellers, but my longest run is to my table saw, so I had to check to make sure my dust collector did indeed suck. The only part of the piping installation I'm going to go into detail on is the table saw hookup, since I feel like this may be a pretty common problem for small workshops. I used a Y connector to reach the router along with a blast gate each for the router and table saw. Next I made a stand for this assembly to sit on. I cut two pieces to height and then added a bevel to them. Then I cut two short pieces the same width and glued and brad nailed them to the miter pieces. This will create a channel for the pipe assembly to sit in. I did some support braces and then cut everything to the final height. Then I connected everything with flexible tubing. I also attached the blast gates at angles so they would be easy to reach. Some of you might be saying, won't that pipe be in the way when you're walking around the workshop? The answer is yes, it is. But the solution is as simple as lifting my foot 4.1 inches, extending it 4.1 inches, and stepping over it. So it's not that serious. So on these micro switches, there's three tabs. The common, normally open, normally closed. So since we want the, when the switch is pressed, we want the dust collector to turn on, we're going to wire the doorbell wire to the common. That's the positive line, the common. And then the neutral line to the normally open. The last bit of electrical engineering is to hook up the AC-DC converter so we don't have to hardwire a nine volt battery to the system. The positive line of the converter goes to the positive line of the system. The neutral line goes to the positive line of the relay, and then the neutral line of the relay goes to your first switch, the positive line goes to the last switch, then you connect each switch with both lines. Then you plug everything in, and it should work. All the wires are wired in parallel, so only one switch has to be pressed to complete the circuit. Next, I ran all the wire and attached it to the piping with zip ties. I attached small blocks with super glue so they could press the switches when the blast gates open. 
Then I opened the blast gates all the way and attached the micro switches with super glue in such a way that they were fully pressed when the gates opened. Then I soldered the connections so I didn't have to worry about anything coming loose. This was a really cheap upgrade and it made my dust collector so much easier to use. It was about 30 bucks of electronics and wiring to make it happen and man was it a well spent $30. I have plans for sale on my website and the goal of these plans is to make it so you don't have to figure out any of the things I had to figure out regarding wiring up the switches and setting up the relay. Plus, I put a lot of work into these videos, and buying a set of plans is a great way to support the channel. It may sound like I'm begging for money, and I am, but let's be real, it takes a lot of work, time, and effort to put out these videos, and a little financial compensation would go a long way towards convincing my wife that this is a worthwhile endeavor. So, I'll buy a set of plans and help a fellow woodworking brother out. Anyways, thanks again for watching. Leave a like and comment down below. Check out one of these videos up here, and I'll see you on the next one.